Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Um, I hope everybody is doing well and is staying indoors <laughs> as you should. Today I want to talk a little bit about um, different types of cameras. I had a lot of people asking me what's the best camera to take with me when I go on holiday, what's the best camera if I want to get better quality images, if I want to print them and so on. So I decided to make this video just to shed a little bit of clarity in terms of um, the different types of cameras that we have out there. First camera that I want to talk about is a compact camera. These ones are the most common ones out there. As the name suggests, they are compact. They are very small, they can fit in your pocket. The one that I have here is a Canon SX710. The idea with the compact cameras is that they are very small, very easy to use. Uh, most of them will have automatic settings. So this is the dial for the settings here. So you have automatic modes, you have manual modes. There are a couple of scene modes, which you will find on most compact cameras nowadays. The scene modes will allow you to select a particular type of photograph that you would like to take, a particular scene. So you have like portrait, landscapes, and then the camera will just figure out the settings for you. So all you have to do is just tell the camera you want to take a portrait, the camera changes the settings, you press the button and it's done. These compact cameras, they um, don't have the option to change the lenses. They only come with this built-in lens. They do have quite a lot of zoom, so as you can see, the, the lens extends when you want to zoom in. This particular model has pretty time zoom, as you can see here in the, in the corner. Having that sort of zoom is fairly common in terms of compact cameras. The majority of compact cameras will have this sort of zoom range. There are some that will have a little bit less, some that will have a little bit more. But the idea with them is that they will have quite a lot of zoom. So they are great for traveling, if you wanna bring things up closer and stuff like that. Most of them nowadays will have Wi-Fi, so you can connect them straight to your phone and then you can transfer the images from the camera straight into your phone and then edit them and put them on Instagram. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video about the photo apps that I use for my pictures that I transfer onto my phone because I do sometimes edit my pictures on my phone. But yes, if you are after a camera, uh, because you want to go on holiday, then a compact camera is the ideal model. Now, there are some other compact cameras out there that will look similar in terms of the size. So we have this Samsung here. Uh, you can see that they are very, very similar in terms of the, the size. They are basically the same, the same size. But this particular one, this is a model from Samsung, um, is a little bit different because even though it is a compact camera, so it can easily fit in your pocket, it has interchangeable lenses and it does have a slightly bigger sensor. Same thing if you guys are interested in learning about sensor sizes and the different sensors that are out there, I can make a video about that, just leave comment down below. This particular model is a compact camera with interchangeable lenses. It does have all the automatic settings, it does even have a scene mode where you can tell the camera what you're about to photograph and the camera will change the settings for you. It is not the only model out there, there are a couple other ones that will have this sort of features that they will be very compact but you will have the options to put different lenses. It does have a built-in flash as well so you can add a little bit more light to your pictures if you're taking pictures at night but the downside to this one compared to the Canon one is that if you want to have a zoom option if you want to bring things closer you will have to buy a second lens next one up is a bridge camera I have one model here um, that unfortunately is not functional it looks like those professional cameras that you see other people using um, it is bigger it does have a, quite a chunky chunky lens, it does have a, a nice big grip so you can hold it a little bit easier. Built-in flash into the camera. Some of models, some newer models will have the option to attach an extra flash at the top of the camera here. And same thing in terms of the settings, you will have automatic settings and manual settings as well. More advanced cameras, bridge cameras will allow you to do a manual focus from the lens, will allow you to change the aperture like you would on a, on a DSLR. The bridge cameras are ideal again for traveling. If you don't mind having something a little bit bigger than a compact camera, you can see the difference in size is it's quite big. 
but the bridge cameras come with one very big advantage is that they will have a lot more zoom power this model that i have here has 40 times zoom now there are models out there that come even with like something crazy like 60 or 80 times zoom so for those people that are into bird watching or they want to photograph bird, um, boats in the sea and stuff like that they are very very good um, some of them will have the flip screen that comes onto the side so you can take pictures at different angles like over the top or at the bottom and they are again very very easy to use most of the people that I know that are into photography and are doing photography as professionals at the moment they have all started with a bridge camera now from the bridge camera most people will move on to a DSLR they will have the option of adding different sort of lenses the model that I have here is a very old one is a Nikon D40 I have a Sigma macro lens on it if I were to compare it to the, to the bridge camera so this is the bridge this is the DSLR um, DSLR is quite big compared to the Nikon. The reason why a lot of people go for this sort of models is because of the sensor that they have inside. The sensor is a lot bigger so that means the quality will be a lot nicer and the fact that you have the option to change the lenses is a great great advantage. They are not ideal for travel in my opinion unless you really really want to carry a huge camera with you and you're really really obsessed about getting very good quality images if you haven't used a DSLR before I won't recommend this as your first camera or as a camera for when you go traveling because you will have to have different sort of lenses when you go traveling with it in terms of interchangeable lens cameras there is another option out there which is gaining a lot more popularity and those are the uh, mirrorless cameras um, so I have an Olympus EPL8 here. It is very, very small, very tiny. I do have a portrait lens attached to it. Uh, and with these cameras, you can put different lenses on them without having this massive camera around. If we are to compare the two, so this is the DSLR, this is the mirrorless camera. Now the mirrorless camera will have that bigger sensor then you will find in a compact or in a bridge camera um, but you do have the option to add your own lenses to it and you do have the option to use the camera as you would like this particular Olympus is again great for traveling depending what sort of traveling you're doing the advantage is that the lenses for mirrorless cameras are not that big the reason why they are called mirrorless is that there is nothing in between the lens and the sensor so if I take the lens off you can see that square in there is the actual sensor so if I place this back on and we do the same on the Nikon you can't really see the sensor but you can see a mirror in there that when you take the picture that flips up and basically allows the light to go into the sensor and produce the actual image um, usually mirrorless cameras will have Wi-Fi will have the flip screen that you will find on some DSLRs as well. This model comes with an external flash that you can attach at the top, automatic and manual settings as well. And again, it's very, very small and compact. If you were to compare this to a compact camera, you can see even though there is a little bit of difference, it's not a huge difference. You can find a smaller lens to attach to the Olympus that will make the camera even more compact and you might even be able to fit it in your pocket. Out of all these cameras, I will have to say that I do prefer the mirrorless ones. Um, even though sometimes I do take my Canon with me if I go for a bike ride or something like that, I don't want to carry slightly bigger camera I just want something that is very very small so it fits in my pocket every single model every single camera has a purpose there is no such thing as the best camera for everything uh, or at least I haven't found it yet if you go online and you search what's the best camera for this or what's the best camera for that there will be people recommending the type of camera that they have so if they have a Canon for example DSLR and you ask them what's the best camera to take with me on a safari holiday people will probably suggest the model that they have because that's what they are used to and if they don't have anything else or if they haven't tried anything else they will just suggest the model that they actually have. 
So the point that I'm trying to make with this video is that if you are thinking of buying a camera, do take into consideration the different models that are out there. Look at compact cameras, look at bridge cameras, look at mirrorless models, look at DSLRs, look at all of them and decide which one will fit the sort of photography that you want to do. Even if that photography is only family pictures or landscapes, there will be a camera out there that will be better than others for that particular thing. Don't buy a camera just because someone is recommending that model. I mean, I can easily say, yes, buy an X-T3 because it's the best camera out there. I love my X-T3 and it produces some amazing images, but it's not a camera for everyone. I know this was a very, very short video, guys, uh, but I hope it did put into perspective the different models of cameras that are out there available and I hope that next time when you're looking online for a camera or when you're seeing people suggesting a particular model you will know a little bit more about what a camera is designed for. If you are, as I said, in the market for buying a digital camera, make sure you go into a shop when we'll be able to go into shops and then have an actual feel for that camera. Just take the camera in your hand, see how it feels, see if it's comfortable in your hand, see if you like it. It's all good and well to buy a camera because of the quality or because of the sensor or because of the particular features that the camera has. But if that camera doesn't feel natural in your hands, if it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be in your hand, if it feels too chunky or too small, don't buy it because you will end up not actually using it because it doesn't feel right for you. That's all for me today. Thanks for watching and I will upload a new video soon. Uh, please leave your suggestions, if you have any, in the comments box and I will try and make a video. Um, I do have another video in mind regarding some film cameras um, that I am working on, so stay tuned for that one.